I'm Mark Doty. In honor of Bob Moog's birthday, the new Google Doodle is the Google version of the Mini Moog. Because some of you might not be very familiar with Synthesis or the Mini Moog, I'm going to show you how to use this Doodle. Okay, first, let's start with the oscillators. Let's see the first oscillator, which is the top one. Okay, let's hear what it is currently set to. This first knob is your octave setting. You get to decide what octave your note is going to be in. Now you'll see these numbers followed by an apostrophe, and those are footages. That's four feet, eight feet, 16 feet, and they have these labels because they're in reference to pipe organs. Those are pipe lengths which define octaves in a pipe organ. And the original Mini Moog and most synthesizers still use this naming procedure. So you're deciding what octave it's gonna be in. Low is uh, below audio range, you can't hear it. It's usually for modulation, but uh, 32 is very low. 16, eight, eight's right in the middle, as you can hear. But we go up to two, which is quite high, but let's get down to eight. Okay, that's a good place to start. This middle knob is your tuning. You get to tune what note that you want it to play within the octave you're in. You have quite a range from which to choose within that octave. But let's put it right in the middle just for fun. And this last knob is the most fun. It's your waveform. Now, they have set this up so it has the original waveforms present on the Mini Moog. And if you don't know what the waveform is, that defines the timbre of the oscillator. It's a graphic representation of the physical sound wave that this oscillator is making. We're gonna start off with the triangle. Triangle sounds like that. We have the sawtooth triangular, which is on the original Mini Moog, this is a special waveform because it's sort of a signature Mini Moog waveform. Next is the Sawtooth. One of the most popular harmonic rich waveforms you can use. Next is a Square Wave. Also harmonically rich. Then we have a less wide Square Wave and it makes a more narrow sound. And then we have one more, which is a very narrow square wave, often called a pulse. And the other oscillators operate in this same way, much like the Mini Moog. We'll go to 16. Since we did eight on the last one, we'll do 16 on this one, which is a lower octave. And we'll choose a different waveform. And if we go down, here's the third oscillator, and we can do the same thing. We'll do eight again for this oscillator. We'll tune it up a little bit to get a different note. And we'll give it, let's give it a sawtooth. Okay, if we put all these together, here we have our three oscillator oscillator section. You're hearing the sound of all three of those oscillators playing their current settings. So you get to make choices about what notes, what octaves, and what waveforms each of the three oscillators are playing. Now we can look over here. These are the volumes of the three oscillators. You can turn one way up so you hear it more and turn the middle one really low. You get to choose what volumes each of the oscillators are. And this knob is an overall volume. There is the mixer section, which controls the volume of the oscillator section. Now remember, first knob, octave. Second knob, tuning. Third knob, waveform. The second oscillator is missing its tuning knob, but it's still first knob, octave. Third knob, waveform. Last oscillator, just like the others. First knob, octave. Second knob, tuning third knob waveform. Okay, your first knob here is your filter cutoff. That defines how bright or dark the sound will be. Right now we have it all the way open, so it's quite bright, but we can make it darker. Or darker still. Or darker still. <laughs> 
that's our first knob. And that's the most important knob in the filter section because that's the knob that the other knobs are going to affect, except for one of them, which I'll show you. That's our filter setting. That is shaving out frequencies from the waveform that's created by the combination of the three oscillators in the oscillator section. So the three notes that are coming out of the oscillator section, they have harmonic content. There's all kinds of little waveforms, little wiggles happening in the sound that's coming out of the oscillator. And the filter carves off the high frequencies because it's a low pass filter. So it is taking the high frequencies off of the sound that's coming from the oscillator. And that's why it gets darker and darker sounding. Now this knob actually shouldn't go in the filter section, but because this is so cool, we're not gonna get mad about it. This is the portamento knob. This means that the change between the keys is delayed. And so instead of one note going to the next note, the note will slide to the next note. That's what portamento is. Listen. <laughs> but we're going to turn it off for now because we're going to focus on the filter. Okay, this knob right here is your filter envelope. Now, an envelope is just a way that you can control what the filter does without like having to actually control the filter cutoff knob as you're playing. The envelope will cause the filter cutoff point, which is this knob, to move in the way that you decide. So listen. We can hear that filter going ear, ear. It's open and then it's closing on its own. And these things are defined by these over here. This knob is your attack. This tells the filter where to start. If it's all the way down here, that means the filter's all the way open when it starts. But if we want the filter to start close, so you can hear the filter starting dark and then getting brighter. That's what this attack knob here is doing. And while we're figuring out how the envelope works, we can turn this down so the effect will be more obvious. We're closing the filter a little bit so that the envelope has a place to start. So you can hear it going, it's starting dark and then getting bright. Now this knob here is the decay. This tells the filter how soon to close after it's been opened by the attack. So you can hear it like closing. It goes and that, that last part of the noise, the ridiculous noise I just made, that is the filter closing because this knob is telling it how long it should be until it closes. If we turn it all the way down, listen what happens. Wow, nothing. That's not what's supposed to happen. If we turn it all the way up, let's hear what happens. We can hear it close. It has a relatively quick close. And so if we turn it all the way up, we have a, and we have the attack all the way up. We have the filter starting close, opening up, and then closing in a nice rounded shape or so. Now, if we close, uh, if we turn the attack all the way down, it starts with the filter open and then the, the decay takes the filter and closes it. This is kind of confusing, I know, but if both of them are completely closed or all the way down, we don't get anything. That's not entirely how the mini mode works, but that's okay. And this last, um, knob is sustain. So this is the way you can keep the filter open no matter what the decay setting is set at. If this were off, the decay would close immediately according to its setting. But with sustain on, you can hold the note and the filter will stay open as long as you're holding the note. The next section is the envelope. And the envelope defines the volume of the sound over the lifetime of the sound. Now, if you remember in the filter section, the envelope controlled how open or closed the filter was at any given point during the lifetime of the sound. The 
This envelope controls how loud the sound is during the lifetime of the sound. Because different sounds have different volumes. Some start quiet and get loud. Some start loud and get quiet. Envelopes were designed to control the volume of sound to imitate the way that sounds happen. This is the attack knob. It defines how quickly a sound reaches its maximum volume. So right now it's at zero, which is the same as saying it starts out at its maximum volume. That starts loud. Now, if you don't know what that means, let's compare. If we turn the attack up, we're actually making the attack slower. Listen now. Hear how the sound starts quiet and gets louder? That's the attack. This knob defines how long it takes from the start of the sound to get to the loudest part of the sound. This next knob is the decay. The decay defines how long it takes for the sound to get quiet again after it's reached its loudest part. So right now it's all the way up. So we have a slow attack, which means it starts quiet and gets loud. And then because we have a slow decay, it goes from loud to quiet relatively slowly. If we turn decay down, you'll see the difference. It starts quiet and gets loud during the attack. And then once we hit the decay, it's at zero. So it drops right off to complete quiet without any slope. So the attack gives us how quickly the sound goes from qu quiet to its loudest point. The decay gives us how long it will go, how long it takes the sound to go from the loudest point to the quietest point. If we turn the attack to zero and the decay to nearly zero, we get a quick attack and a quick decay, which is this. The sound happens quickly and then it stops quickly. The sustain knob. Now what the sustain knob does is it allows you to hold the note down without it disappearing. Because you'll remember if we had that off, when we have the sustain off, you can hold the note and I'm still holding the note. You can see me holding it, but there's no sound because the decay has taken the sound to zero because it's gone through its life cycle. Now what the sustain does is it injects a level at which the sound can be held before the decay reaches zero. So the sound will continue as long as you hold down a key, but then when you let go of the key, the sound disappears. That's what the sustain does. So right now we have no sustain and the sound will go away while we hold it. But if we turn the sustain up, the sound will stay as long as we're holding it and then disappear after that. Holding, holding, holding. And now I've let go. And at the end of that, you'll notice it kind of sloped away. It didn't immediately stop. We got the tail end of the decay that we set up here. And that's what's supposed to happen. The sustain interrupts the decay, holds it at a certain volume level until you let go, and then continues the decay you've set. So that's all there is to it. Attack, how quickly the sound happens. Decay, how quickly the sound goes away. And sustain, allows you to hold the note for any amount of time that you want without it going away until you're ready for it to go away. And that's all the envelope is. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to use the recorder. First, you make a sound, which I've made. I've made a bass sound. And then you click on, for example, the first track, because there are four tracks, four different tracks that you, rec you can record different sounds on. And then you press record. Next, I will make a different sound. We select the second track and record. And 
And then we just go on to the third track and make a new noise. Here, let's make something else. Okay, we've got some weird stuff going on, but you can see uh, how this works. You have four different tracks. You choose a sound, choose a track, press record, and go. <laughs> <laughs> 